Right, so here we are with uh, Captain Chris and as you can see Liz Welsh who is one of our two head girls and also our resident physio is working on this morning. He's actually going to have a piece of work um, later on this morning which we'll, uh, we'll see. And Liz has been trained by Mary Bromley and works very closely with Mary Bromley. Uh, Mary is here every Tuesday and sees horses that we think or Liz thinks uh, would you know, benefit from her attention. Uh, Captain Chris being one of them, one of the reasons that um, we think he's been jumping you know, right a little bit, uh, which Yogi Bryson's physio as well as Mary you know, agrees on, is that um, his, he has, just doesn't built up his muscle as much as we'd possibly like. So yeah. since he's been to Yogi's, we've been work, well, Liz has been working very hard on trying to level up all his muscles so we're as good as we possibly can be for when we go to Cheltenham. I mean, he's always jumped slightly right, but he was just absolutely throwing himself that way at Cheltenham in the Argento. And basically, when we got him home, Mrs Bromley, who we work very closely with, we're lucky enough to have her in every Tuesday to come and check maybe any fallers or any other problems we've had. And she found a problem with his off hind stifle. And um, he hasn't been very stable on it on the other side. And um, we've been working by putting a weight on that off hind. And then I've been working, massaging the muscles, keeping them warm. So when he does start to build, which he has done, um, he's using muscles that he's not used to. And you actually have to then keep them warm, keep them relaxed. Like any sort of human athlete, a much more relaxed muscle then works better within itself. And um, because he probably didn't trust himself to push off that limb and he'd actually got used to it and threw himself at the fence. Now he thinks, if they gain confidence in knowing it feels stable and safe and you can actually push off it, then all the jumping comes together. But like, yeah, just like people, they need to know and trust their own range of movement. And so what we do back here is actually, yeah, keep the muscles warm, supple, so when they do actually go out, start galloping and schooling again, it feels more comfortable when they're doing it. And so they gradually start to let go and say, oh, it's okay, I can do that now and trust in it more. So he's, yeah, he's schooling better at home. Um, looks well, looks much better within himself. He did look fairly tired after Cheltenham, a bit dehydrated and dry in his coat, but he's looking a lot better now. So we're hoping this daily, sort of daily massage and working with Mary is actually gonna do the trick and get back to Cheltenham in good form. <laughs> He's never been completely level behind, but like all of these horses are so different and the skeletons are also different. They don't necessarily have to be to produce good races. But what they do, if they do find a secondary weakness to that, then you have to work with it and work within their own range of movement to actually build these muscles. But yeah, he's, lo he's looking very good and strong now. And the muscles actually are feeling a, lo a lot better, a lot more supple under your hands. Good boy, aren't you? Good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. That's nice, isn't it? Good lad. Oh, boy. And you get quite heavy sometimes, don't you? <laughs> good lad. You think it must be so nice. It's bits you've, you know, massive surface area to work on, but if you can't reach it, they can bend round, and obviously scratch themselves and roll. But there's areas of sort of tension in the muscle that they can't relax themselves. They may obviously make themselves weightless, which is great when they're rolling around in the field or in the school, which they can open up anywhere in their spine. But these are the areas that they really need help with. And especially in the neck, they obviously use their heads to balance with when they're jumping. So <laughs> that's the one thing you need to relax all the muscles around the neck to help them relax their head. Good boy. You've seen um, what Captain Chris has on a, on a daily basis before and after exercise, full body treatment from Liz. And now we'll get him tacked up and go and see him working on the gallops. Uh, one of his last pieces of work before, before he goes to Cheltenham. And um, it is, you know, so far we're all going well. I spoke to Mr Waitley in the week and obviously the Governor's been in touch with him um, probably several times as well. He's very keen to have a go at the Gold Cup just because it's not very often you get the opportunity to even think about running the Gold Cup. 
and with the news of Cato Star being possibly doubtful, that obviously weakens the race somewhat. Uh, so no, it hasn't been decided, but I would say at this stage it's probably 60-40 in favour of the Gold Cup. Um, but uh, whatever race he goes for, he's he's in great form. He's looking better in his coat now. The schooling's gone well. So we'll um, hopefully have a bit of a better idea after this, this piece of work. This is Featherbed Lane and Liz, who you've seen already this morning. So Featherbed Lane's just going to have a routine canter this morning. Done everything right so far this season. Just got narrowly touched off in the Lanzarote. Um, and one of the, one of the favourites, Cheldon. Good. Here comes Menora. Uh, Menora just again going to have a canter this morning. He schooled very well during the week. He'll school once more what, next week, and uh, as long as that goes okay, he'll go straight for the Arkle. Uh, his work's been very good. He looks in good form. So I uh, couldn't be happy with him at this stage. Okay. Here comes Colour Squadron, one of the leading contenders for the Supreme Novices. And again, he's, uh, his form's been very solid all season and um, you know, very, very happy with him. And he'll go straight there now. He, probably, he'll, he had a piece of work yesterday. He might have another piece of work next week, depending on what his weight's like on, um, on Monday. And again, you know, just coming in his coat, we couldn't be happy with him at this stage. And we've got Dare Me and Saddler's Risk upside each other. Dare Me won two novice hurdles very easily last season and looked top class. He's had a couple of runs this season just to get him um, absolutely spot on. We're very happy with him so far. He'll probably come on for his two runs that he's had this season. And uh, he has got an entry in the champion hurdle, but he's very unlikely to, to run it. He'll run either in the, the county hurdle or the uh, Martin Pike conditional jockeys race. Wishful thinking sitting in behind Colour Squadron, wishful thinking always just sits in behind because he's a little bit keen upside. Let's have a quick word with these workers in the middle if you want to come in with me. Um, happy? Yeah. Done that well. Good. So, uh, particularly pleased with Captain Chris's piece of work. He's um, he worked with Snap Tie. Snap Tie should work better than him. And Chris Gagan, although happy with Snap Tie, has just struggled to get to Captain Chris. So uh, delighted with his piece of work. So that's very very encouraging. And uh, Baltasar King's worked worked very well. Uh, disengager Matt Griffiths was happy with him, so that was good. And of all the the other canterers, um, everything's gone well, really. Um, as I say, they were only having a, a routine canter, and yeah, no no problems this morning. So nice, bright, sunny morning. Everything's gone well. What could possibly be wrong? Uh, no, very very pleased with where we are at the moment. As I say, we've obviously had. Um, yeah, one or two issues along the way. Uh, Fingal Bay has been the, the biggest um, sort of bad news story for us in the last couple of weeks. It's not like he's got a leg or anything like that. It's nothing serious, but it's just very bad timing and we will have to sadly miss Cheltenham. But he'll be back and we'll either go um, probably miss Aintree and go back to Punchstown or go to Punchstown, uh, which gives us plenty of time to get the hamstring right, get him back A1 fit. Um, 
and he'll go there nice and fresh when everything else has had a hard time going to Cheltenham and Aintree and we can pick up the pieces at the end of the season hopefully and as I say it's, it's nothing serious it's just very bad timing um, so um, he will be back that's the main thing